All right, second question. So I just talked about the gazebo simulator for Care Pursuit. Another question is what other types of worlds or maps might we need? So this is an important question to ask because as we look ahead testing more algorithms, one of the most exciting parts is testing on different worlds and environments. It can honestly get pretty boring to do the same loop for testing every single time, even though it's convenient. And sometimes we are limited in that capacity. So here at Penn, we have a lot of interesting buildings. We have the engineering building. So what I drew earlier, this is around the M-Lab. It's the most convenient, not too much foot traffic. But even within the engineering building, there's four buildings and we could potentially do a loop that only goes about halfway. But still, it's an interesting world we could test on. And so what I've been thinking about is, you know, eventually can we take this car outside into and plot waypoints? Can we take the car into other buildings, such as the same nanotechnology building would be really cool. Buildings that have ramps, building the second loops. Um, and that would be really interesting. Or can we even take it to a park eventually and just have it run on sidewalks autonomously? That'd be really cool as well. So in terms of, I think we have to consider this from different perspectives. So if this is from the perspective of a course, for instance, the new ESC 680 course that is going to be taught at Penn that I'm going to be helping to teach, then maybe we only need one map or world, maybe two, maybe one of the hallways around the classroom and maybe one of those portable ones we can set up in a room using the tubes. And we really wouldn't need much more than that because the purpose of the course would be to teach a lot of uh, course concepts. And a lot of it would be done in the simulator anyway. So we wouldn't want to be taken to the real world. We can't even have four students working on the same track at the same time. Um, but oftentimes in the real world, it's just fun to be able to test the car in different environments. You can learn a lot throughout the way. For example, last week when Jack and I were doing loops around Levine, doing counterclockwise loops was pretty simple. It was working well. But once we took it to a different track where we needed to make 180 degree turns, Jack and I realized that we actually had to... Uh, had to set the look ahead distance differently. We had to change different variables, had to introduce a couple of things. It was, it just tested more edge cases. So in terms of what other worlds or maps we might, we need, I think we can break it down this way. Let me try and plot out what I'm thinking. So, I mean, many worlds can generally be broken down into pretty common scenarios. So you have one where you're just literally going down hallways and it's pretty clear on both sides and the car's just going down corridors. That's one type of world. Another type of world is generally just a room where you want the car to go anywhere you tell it to go. So imagine you're in a room and you just tell the car I want it to go like this and then make a circle, loop, come back. A third type of world is one where also a classroom, but perhaps the car may overlap itself. So it may do loops and it may do a circle here. And there may even be multiple cars in this world that okay, may run into each other. And the fourth one that I can think of is an open type of world where you're just in like a park and you're just like going down a sidewalk or just going down a grass hill and it's just outdoors. And this is probably the hardest where F110 wouldn't really come into play simply because the ladder camera on the car does not able to see that much uh, in terms of downwards and upwards. And it also has trouble going up ramps because the ladder camera just sees this part, not the top part. So those are some cases. Um, so if we assume that we don't have too many maps, then we can actually spend a lot of time taking an actual map and turning it into a SketchUp file or some type of world. But if it's a case where we have a lot of maps, then we can't create with SketchUp or whatever software we use worlds for each one to run in the simulator in the real world, just because it can be very time consuming. And as worlds get bigger, it can be more complicated as well. Cartographer Ross can map bigger worlds, but it oftentimes has troubles with 90 degree angles and so on and so forth. Not to mention that in the real world, it's hard to just test on big loops because you have to run after the car. So there's that scenario as well. I guess a fifth type of world is one where it can also just be enclosed, but we have obstacles along the way. And I think this is pretty interesting for the car to have to navigate through these and path plan. 
this will probably very easily become something in the class, some type of lab. And it also just makes races interesting because in my opinion, if we have a race that is in a closed track or even some openings, I feel like all students will just end up using waypoints. They'll end up using a particle filter. Uh, they can use the MIT one. And then they'll just end up generating waypoints and doing a pure pursuit, which is like the simplest algorithm of the whole bunch. There's nothing really simpler than it, especially in terms of implementation. So this is the case I don't think we'll be setting up students for very good success because we want them to be able to think about other algorithms and test other things. So I guess a sixth world I didn't think about was also cars on heads on head, head on head. And I think this would be really interesting if you have two cars starting from the starting line and racing against each other. And in this case, I guess you could have algorithms for the cars to pass each other and overtake. It would be really interesting because you cannot just follow waypoints here. Or maybe you could follow waypoints and as soon as an obstacle comes up or you see a car as an obstacle, you have to path plan around it and get back onto your waypoint. I think that's pretty interesting. These are all stuff in the lab, but after a while it could get a little boring just because you know, you're know you just operating the small world and not really taking it out. But that's kind of what robotics research encompasses. So just thinking out loud, these are some other worlds or maps that we might need for a course. It would be helpful uh, to see how fast a car can go, but it's also interesting to see other things a car might be able to do, such as navigate to a dead end and turn itself around, even go backwards. I mean, stuff like that would be pretty interesting. Uh, I mean, I'll take one example. The case of a car going up a ramp is not easy, and yet it's an important problem to solve because the engineering quad has a lot of ramps that the car needs to go up. So if you have our car here, this is from a side view, I guess, with the lighter sensor, this lighter sensor is just gonna hit this part and not see anything above, and therefore won't be able to localize correctly. Is there a way such that we can identify that's on a ramp? I guess Matt had talked about this, or even use the Z depth camera sensor fusion or just basically I guess that is sensor fusion because this can look 30 meters in advance so you can see a lot more and it's also higher angle view and with that are we able to combine the two sensors together the Z camera and the lighter camera in a way such that we can get more information in fact it would be interesting having a camera in the real world because oftentimes we do want to see from the car's point of view what it's seeing and may also want to record videos or see obstacles that are coming up. The car may be going really fast and all of a sudden see something come up. Which reminds me, I think I really should make a world for Levine. I will try the current world and see if the car can actually work in it tomorrow. All right. Well, thank you for listening.